So lately, I have been doing a little bit of thinking on the thinking part of my mind, and I don't know if it's that things don't make sense or whatnot, but I've I've come to realize that the notes I've been taking, the books I've been reading, the everything kind of correlates back to the same basic principles, and most of it has to do with the fact that people nowadays, in all reality, literally have no idea who they are, or what they want, or what they want to achieve or where they want to be and they can't see it they don't want to see it but the thing also that's striking this about it no one will admit to it no one just be like oh yeah you're right i really don't know what i want i really don't know where i want to be i really can't see what i want or who i am i don't know you're right i don't know no one says that everyone consistently thinks that they know and they like they tell you and pound into your head like it seems like they know but in all reality when you try to ask them to go into detail about something they couldn't oh, i just lost something something just fell off the wall um, like, for example, right, we talk about how when it comes to me thinking about things, I need proof that to back up you do what I'm what I'm saying or thinking, I need you to have some sort of proof that says, OK, I, I can believe you because you have that evidence or that fact sheet says this. All right. So, OK, I'll believe you then because you have the evidence and you've done the, the work or whatever you want to call it for me to understand that and get that far. So now. I, okay, all right, that's fair, fair game. I accept, I, I understand that, and now I'm going to mold my belief off of the information you just gave me. But people don't do that. And then when they then they call you closed-minded and, and self-centered when you, you don't accept their idea. But why should I accept your idea if you don't have evidence to back it up? Exactly. You, you, you can't really accept an idea unless you have evidence to, say, back it up. And most people don't have evidence to back up the, what they're saying. Okay, so what I want to, to get out here in the world, um, again, is dream, okay? Dreams. Um, dreams, not dreams when you're sleeping, okay? There is, I, I don't study dreams when you're sleeping because when it comes to actually executing life, dreams when you're sleeping don't matter. <laughs> um, they do, but they don't. It's a lot of people, they think too much into dreams when they're sleeping, right? Um, dreams when you're sleeping is more of a subconscious mind thing, so... I can't tell you the relativity of it. I don't study that. I'm, I don't know that much about that. And I really don't have a desire to study it right now. I'm talking about dreams in life. What is your dream? What is the ultimate thing that you want to have or achieve? Um, that ultimate thing could be anything from being the best at uh, a, a specific job that you want to obtain at one point, or whether it's being a good father or a husband or a mentor to somebody or a good athlete or a soldier, anything, you know, you want to be the best at it. And that's the thing. That dream is what drives you. That dream is why you'll get up every day. Why do people when they're younger, um, why, why can't people when they're younger just get out of bed in the morning? So many people dread getting up in the morning when they're younger, but they, people dread getting up all throughout their life. And you know why that is? It's simply because they don't have anything to drive them. They have no motive no motivation to get through the day. They don't want to get through the day, so they choose not to get up. They hit the snooze button. They go back to bed. They struggle to get out of bed because they just don't have anything throughout their day that brings enough joy to them to make it seem worth getting up. Now, that's the truth, okay? I used to be the same way. I used to dread getting up in the morning, and I've kicked that habit. It's so much easier just to get up and get going and get on with life in the day. You got to face the adversity, whether or not you, there's a hundred reasons to get not to get up or there's a hundred reasons to get up. There's got to be one thing every day that drives you to get up, that makes you want to get out of bed, that makes you to want to go out into the world and do something with yourself or with somebody or for somebody or anything like that. There has to be one solid motive to get you up in the morning out of bed and moving okay and you have to find that we call that your why why are you doing this why are you getting up why are you doing whatever you're doing throughout the day what is that reason why you go out there you get the why and you execute okay um one of the reasons why i find it such a drag to want to go to sleep or not go to sleep but get up um is school high school especially i'm in high school right now right and you realize that high school resembles nothing in compared to the real world in terms of second chances. Um, I got a great list here. You know what? I'll I'll read it off. Let me. Fuck! I put the one thing over here. I don't think I can go get it. I would read the one off that I have on the wall and hung up, but I don't want to. Cause I'm. Oh wait, never mind. I have one. Ugh, fuck it. I'll just. Okay, it's right here. All right. Here we go. Bill Gates' eleven rules you'll never learn in high school. Listen up, kids. 
Rule number one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Rule two, <laughs> rule two, <laughs> um, rule two, I said again, rule two, the world <laughs> won't care about your self-esteem. The world will expect you to accomplish something before you feel good about yourself. Rule three, you will not make $60,000 right out of high school. You won't be a vice president with a car phone until you earn both. Do you get that? You can't have $60,000 a year or have a car phone until you've earned them, okay? Uh, rule four, if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss. Now, here's the common misconception about that. Most kids in high school have jobs and say they have a boss. Um, I like to think of it as a minimum wage job. Boss isn't really a boss. They're a boss. They're a lot more lenient. They understand, I don't know if they want to understand more, but they're, the leniency level is a lot higher than real world bosses. Real world bosses expect results so they can make profits and make the big bucks. That's what they care about. That's why they hired you. Rule five, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping, and it's called opportunity. Okay, one thing that I confuse um, sometimes with the dreams is, and the ultimate thing I want in life is, dreams are, they're crazy things, right? It doesn't matter how crazy your dream is to other people, whether it's working this job that you've had since you were in high school and you're just working up the ladders of that job because you enjoy it, and that job, doing that and that job allows you to do other things that you enjoy, What's wrong with executing that? See, I get roped into the fact of trying to make everyone else happy and think that this is below me because everyone says it's below me, so I can't try this even though it's what I want to do because I enjoy it. Um, it doesn't matter what you find joy in life, whether it's a job, people. You have to find something that you can enjoy every day so that you have your why to get up in the morning. Rule six, if you mess up, it's not your parents' fault, so don't whine about your mistakes. Learn from them. In high school and all throughout life, people always have the blame list, Okay. Um, I contribute this to Jim Rohn. I don't have a uh, it written down on a fact sheet, but this long list of reasons why he wasn't doing well or why you're not doing well. Okay, you're gonna blame everything. You're gonna blame people, your family, the economy, traffic, the weather, the fucking management, your bosses, your classmates, your fa anything you can think of. You're gonna blame. Okay, but you know the one thing that's not gonna be on that list? You. No one blames themselves. If you're not doing well, don't blame everybody else. Don't blame anything. Blame yourself. Erase everything and put your name on that list. Your name. Me. Okay? Because you're the only person that um, you have to blame for your misfortunes in life. You're the only person. There's no one else out there that you can blame that makes any logical sense. Rule number seven. Before you were born, your parents weren't as boring as they are now. They got that way from paying your bills, cleaning your clothes, and listening to, and listening to you talk about how cool you thought you were. So... Before you save the rainforest from the parasites of your parents' generation, try declosing the closet in your own room. I don't really get the last part of 100%, but what it's trying to say is before you try to uh, task tackle the big task that you're blaming your parents for, try to take, to take care of your own messes before you try to, you know, you're yelling at your parents because they're not doing this right for you or for them. Worry about yourself right now. you got to make sure you're doing your own stuff before you can start trying to tell other people what they're doing wrong. Uh, rule eight, your school may have done away with winners and losers, but life has not. In some schools, they have abolished failing grades, and they'll give you as many times as you want to get the right answer. This doesn't bear the slightest resemblance to anything in real life. Anything. That rule is the one that hit me the hardest when I first saw this. this, this, this these rules um, from Bill Gates, and no one understands that, Okay. People kind of know what's out there, but they don't understand that. People don't really realize that in high school, even when you're starting off with minimum wage jobs, you have a trillion chances to make things right or to get the right answer or everything to make, you know, in life, there are no second chances. There, There is no uh, many times to get the right answer, okay? You got one shot. There's winners and losers in life. The winners are up here and the losers are down here, okay? If you don't follow your dream and you don't have the passion or the devotion to whatever you're doing, you're going to be a loser. You're not going to want to get up in the morning. You're not going to want to live your life, and you're going to have no drive if you're a loser, okay? The winners are the ones who are out there doing what they want to do every day. No matter how crazy it seems, no matter what it is, they're out there every day doing that one thing that they enjoy most. Okay, rule number uh, nine. Life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summers off, and very few employers are interested in helping you find yourself. Do that on your own time. See, one thing that I like, uh, I try to get out there when I talk to, especially with friends and people I really, really care about that are my age, I try to tell them that 
right now is when you got to think about this philosophy stuff and the reasons and your dreams and your whys and why you're getting up in the morning, what you're going to do with your life, because now you have time to do it. Now you have an abundance of time to just kind of sit down and let your mind go um, and imagine, use your imagination. And when you're older, you're too busy working, paying bills, worrying about family and all this other stuff that you can't do that. You can't find yourself. There's not that much own time. You don't have summers off. You know, people don't care about you in the real world, okay? People get this crazy concept that everyone cares about them in the real world, that they're going to feel sympathy for them if they fail or don't succeed. No, they're going to kick you, kick dirt over you and keep moving forward. They don't give a shit about you, okay? Rule number 10, television and video games do not, uh, are not real life. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go to jobs. And that's, for today's generation, it kind of makes more sense. You watch television, you never see people going to work. They're always at their house making jokes and funnies. Mm, that's not how life works, my friends. Um, I've learned a lot lately that honestly, when you have when you're working a lot and you have a lot going on, whether it's relationships, family, you have little time for yourself and little time just to do the do the TV show. Okay. Uh, rule number eleven: Be nice to nerds. Chances are you'll end up working for one. That's pretty straightforward, I'd say. You know, um, people that work their butt off and are smart, you know, they succeed because they know who they are what they want, and how they're going to get there. Um, the most important thing is to know where you want to be and then be able to see the path of getting there, what you're going to do to accomplish that, how you're going to do it, how you're going to get up in the morning, all that kind of stuff, okay? But here we go. What do we got here? Dreams and, and, and life. Um, what is your dream for your life? What is that one thing that you want to have or obtain, okay? Is it the best at a job? Is it just a job? Is it to be the best athlete in a certain sport? Is it to break a record of some kind? Is it to be the best father or husband you could possibly be or and provide your kids with a better life than you had? What's the reason why you're doing what you're doing? Okay. And the thing is, is you have to make sure you're outward facing when you answer that question. You have to make sure that what you're doing isn't isn't in stone written down for you. You can't have something in life that you're doing solely for yourself because I've come to learn that when you think that you're doing it for yourself, that the your character gets in the way, you could say, and you push away from doing that because it's not that you're doing it for yourself. It's because you're doing it for yourself and you, you make yourself think that you're changing. So, okay, I'm doing this for myself right now. I'm not thinking this way, so I got to go do something else, okay? If you're doing it for somebody else or for some other person, then you can keep doing it as long as that person, as long as you're trying to make and do it for them, okay? You have a drive. Let's say your father died when you were young, and you want to be the best at this because you knew that he wanted, he wa you knew that he wanted you to have the best life you could have. So you're doing this for him, and your whole life you're thinking that if I don't do this, I'm going to let him down, and he's going to be upset with me, okay? Something like, a scenario like that, you could say, is um is something you could look at, it. I guess. Uh, is it possible to have all your dreams become reality in your lifetime? That's a good question. Yes. But the big question is, have you made the decision to go out there and accomplish all of your dreams, to go obtain all of them? People get mis uh, get caught up in this misconception that you can't have what you want in life, or that uh, life isn't fair, that's right, but you can have or do anything you want with your life. Um my dream is honestly I've I've I don't know if I have a said dream, but the thing I always think about a lot is I want to make sure that I can I want to have be a, a good husband, a good father and provide my kids with a better life than I had for myself. Um it's a pretty strong it's a pretty out it's a pretty thing that's hard to obtain because honestly when I look at my life, I've had a pretty good childhood, okay? Um a lot's been given to me and I've also worked a lot for myself. And I want to be able to show my kids more and help them more than I was helped or uh you know, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it exactly, but a concept like that. And that's that's my, my like, down dream thing, right? But also at the same time, my dream is to continue to live the life I live now. And to simply say the life I live now is to wake up every day and be able to do whatever I want whenever I want, okay? Um, that's not a hard goal in life. Uh, you just have to set yourself up financially and economically and socially and all these ways to where when you're not doing this, you can do whatever the hell you want with your time. You, know, you can go places, you can see things, stuff like that. That's how you have to live um, live your life, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know how to, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how else to like go, go from that. But 
Okay, and then goals. Here, here's something that I that I come to realize that people also don't understand. People don't really know what goals are, or how to set them, or how to use them to accomplish things, or to be or have anything you want. Goals are really a fairly simple thing if you think about them. Um, they're not this out there concept or idea. Goals are goals, and anybody can have them or obtain them. Um, they're not. They're you have to set them out. You have to start with small goals and work up to your big goal. Okay, you have to learn how to set goals. They have to be reasonable. You have to be able to accomplish them. You have to say, here's my goal and here's the deadline to meet. If you don't set a deadline, then you're going to keep protagonizing that goal. Humans naturally do that. Um, and then achieving them in a set time. Okay, I just said that. Okay, you have to put time limits on how and when you can set your and when you can have your goal accomplished. Otherwise, you won't accomplish your goal because you're giving yourself ample time here to try to accomplish it. You have to set a deadline and a limit to when you can accomplish this goal. Okay, uh, dreams aren't hard. Okay, let's go into this thing right here. This is important. Uh, the reasons why... Hold on. The, the reasons people... Uh, when people fail to achieve their goals, what are the reasons they give? Okay, here we go. Resources, time, money, technology, contacts, experience, and management. Those are the things people tend to blame the most. Those are like the, the core categories here. All right. And, oh, never mind. That's resources versus resourcefulness. Never mind. Okay. So time, money, technology, contacts, experience, and management. I can't take, I can't read my own notes here. Um, okay. And what do these have to do versus like resourcefulness? Like you, yourself, inside you. That's all up to you. Okay. Creativity, determination, loving, caring, curiosity, passion, and resolve. Okay, you have to have all those things to go out there and do anything, right? Um, destiny, through decision of destiny, what am I going to focus on? Focus equals feeling, past, present, future, solve for others. I've learned that you have to focus on the future. You have to see the future. You have to see what you're going to do the next day, what you're going to do 10 years from now. You have to be able to see where you want to be so you can get there okay if you see where you want to get you will naturally do the things that you have to do to get there it the present takes care of itself when you always look at the future when you get caught up in the present you overthink things because you think things don't have meaning or purpose because they're not working out right right now even though you know that then in the future things will be all right you're just a little hiccup or this went wrong move forward move past it move past it okay um what are you going to do? Are you going to give up or move forward? Okay, I guess you could say people get caught up in that kind of thing. Um, what are you going to move forward? Or are you just going to quit? You're going to give up? You're going to stop? No, you're going to keep moving forward. Always something there. You have to know that in life, no matter where you are, you always deserve more than what you have. But you have to go out there and get what you ha what you deserve. Okay. Um, okay, indivisible forces that shape us in the moment, our state, physical, emotional. Okay, that's present. Okay, you can be emotionally damaged in the present or physically damaged in the present. Your state of mind right now. Okay, and then long term, our model for the world slash worldview, the shaper of meaning, emotion, and action. See, when you look at long term in the future, it helps to shape things. Okay, you're shaping your emotion and your action. Okay, you have to learn to control your emotions so that your emotions don't get the best of you in the present. So if you look in the future, you're going to know where you want to be emotionally, whether it be in a relationship or something, right? You, you know that it's going to work out and it'll be okay, okay? So you're going to mold it in your head. So no matter what happens in the present, no matter what happens in the present, since you have that mold of the future, the present will not change. The present will keep moving forward no matter what happens because you know the future, okay? Uh, driving uh forces number one force number one driving forces target for life never mind that's it. uh the six human needs are certainty significance growth uncertainty variety love connection and contribution okay those are the six human needs that's of course tony robin speaking the six human needs we'll quote that down um like all those things makes you know i've learned that people uh, the reason why a lot of people do things what they do in terms of relationships is humans cannot live in a state of emptiness or loneliness for very long. Anxiety is the main cause of any human um, doubt or downfall. It's, it's, it's anxiety. People don't want to be lonely in life. People can't live in a state of loneliness or emptiness for too long. Otherwise, they overthink things or they do or they they just get going for no um, said reason. Excuse me. Okay. Uh I don't know, this was kind of an out there kind of thing, I guess. It wasn't really driven. I kind of just go off into a rant, you know? I don't have my ideas 
written down into like a pure concept like this is the dream you know all that stuff you know it's i don't know i, I just kind of ramble so i'm working on that that's one of my goals and dreams is to be able to do this forever except be organized have like a better meaning or a certainty to it but right now it's the thing of just you're trying to compile all these thoughts and ideas and you don't know what direction you're going or where you got to go kind of you know so you're just compiling ideas and things and you're trying to make sense of it all when i talk it out i realize you know what i can relate to how i can elaborate instead of thinking i can elaborate on something when i write it down when really i don't even you know what i mean um but i'll leave you with this interesting note okay uh, you know how people always don't don't confuse change with progress, okay? I this I opened my eyes so much when I first heard it. Um, change is natural. Change is always change happens naturally. You you don't have to work for change. It'll happen automatically. It just happens. Change happens naturally throughout life. No matter where you are or who you are, change happens throughout life. You can't dodge change. So don't try to change something make progress at something raise your standard change your standard and make progress in something okay see the future see yourself making progress and the change happens automatically okay you you will only change if you yourself want to change okay Tony Robbins said in his one one seminar video that Throughout all of his studies and people he's talked to, the one thing he's learned about people is people always go back to who they believe they are, okay? They're not going to change for you if they don't want to change for themselves. If it's not who they are, they're not going to change, no matter how much they say they care about you or anything. That's what you get hooked up, caught up in relationships. Some people are good at changing. I'm, I like to think of myself as someone good at changing because I change for other people. I change to make things right for them, not for me. I like to think of myself as outward facing because the things I do are not for me. Ultimately, I don't think sometimes in the moment they might be but ultimately they're for other people I try to make other people happy and be there for them when they need me Okay, and then it's weird too because at the same time when I think about it and look back in a sense It's like then when you want them to be there for you and like look out for you or you know Do what I was doing for them They don't really do that because that's not really who they are and you expect them to because they know that you're doing it for them So you can't expect thing you can you can never you have to stop expecting things for yourself You have to always be outward facing, trying not to all this, because what that will do is you'll always be helping others and you'll see that in them, you'll know that they're happy, and then the one time they come back and do it to you, it'll mean so much to you, because it's when you really need it, you know? Because it's just, it's just like what you see or whatever, so, I don't know, I mean, just go with it, you know? Find what you want, and you gotta go out there, and you gotta make the steps to get there, and you gotta start now. Now is the time to start. But, I guess that's all I got. It was kind of a rant. I don't even know what we're going to call this. Um, we covered so many things. I mean, we'll call, okay, the beginning of a dream. That's it. Think about all those things, and there you go. You can you can maybe have the foundation to begin or know your dream or all that fun stuff. So thank you guys for watching and listening. I'll talk to everybody later, and I'm, I believe it or not, I am trying to get better and more consistent. So thank you all, and um, it means it means a lot.